There's money in beef, but it doesn't come easy. There's a market for all the steers you can raise, but it's a thousand miles away. You get top prices only for top cattle. Pushing the herd up the trail is only half the job. You've got to get it there in good shape. It takes tough men working long hours for low wages, staring trouble in the face at every bend in the trail. I'm one of them, Gil Faber, trail boss. Any sign of them? No, I only went out six or seven miles, though. That's all I told you to go. Yeah, but I could have gone more, boss. Nope. You better get back to herd where you belong, kid. Mr. Faber sure won't like it if he finds you out here a soldier like this. Man gets awful hot out there, Jim. I've been out there three or four hours. Why aren't you out watching the beeves, Teddy? Beeves are too hot to move, Mr. Faber. Well, you always got a choice. Either stand guard or draw your pay. What's eating on him, Jim? We're in Cheyenne country. Pete's been gone two days. He's got a right to be bothered. Get back to your bees, Teddy. Well, Pete, old partner, the boss is sure gonna be glad to see you. Kind of glad to be here, too, Jim. Where is he? By the chuck wagon. Thanks. Well, where is he, anyhow? All right, he'll be back as soon as Scarlet finds him. That's a, that's a real good wish, Mom. Really is. Who cooked it? What happened to you, Pete? Cheyenne. Ran into him about noon yesterday. On the trail? Smack on it. I swung off about 10 miles to head out in an old willow sink till it got dark. A doggone horse kept stomping around, making noise. I had to turn him loose. I spent the rest of the night tracking him, carrying my saddle on my back while I was doing it. Hunting or a war party? I couldn't make out any paint from where I was. About how many? I saw two different parties, about 40 or 50 in each. According to the sign, there's plenty more of them scattered around out there. All bucks? Best I can tell, they're all bucks. Roddy, you better let the guards know. Scarlett, you take up a spot opposite Teddy. Yes, sir. I'd like to go on guard, too, Mr. Faber. All right, Collins, you and Beckstrom settle up. As soon as you get out there, uh, Roddy will let you know where to sit guard. Pull out my bedroll for me? Well, sure thing, Mr. Nolan. Well, you'll feel better after you've rested a couple of hours. Well, I feel pretty good right now just being back. That is, I did feel pretty good. I just saw something that turned my stomach. Start this, Mr. Favor. He just tied into me. No reason at all. When did he join this drive? Back at helper straighten post, right after you left. What's it all about? It's a stinking bounty hunter, that's what it's all about. Took a friend of mine in for murder one time and let a mob hang him. And then the next day they found out they hung the wrong man. Dagger didn't care. He was gone with his stinking lot of blood money. All right, Pete, that's enough. Jeez, look at you. 
What would a stinking bounty hunter want with a drover's pay? I'd like to know that. All right, I was a bounty hunter. Man can't be right in everything he does. But I give it up 10 years ago, been punching cattle ever since. You hear him admit it, he's a bounty hunter. Yeah, 10 years ago, that's a long time. It seems to me the townsfolk were wrong, not him. You mean you're gonna let him stay? We can handle cattle, we need the men. You better get some rest. I don't need any rest. Daggett. Uh. Thanks. I'd like to talk to you. Yeah? I didn't uh, pay you right off. Not until you tangled with Nolan out there. But I've heard about you. When did you say you quit uh, bounty hunting? What's it to you? Same line of work. I figure we're on this trail for the same reason. Uh, bounties for whites of Cheyenne's capture. Government's paying uh, 500 apiece for their return, ain't it? You here for that reason? Same as you. I knew the herd was trailing through Cheyenne country. Say, why don't you uh, throw in with me? One man can't do too much alone. Not against a Cheyenne, anyway. I've been figuring on getting a bunch of these drovers to come in with me. Ain't enough in it for that, is it? You've been reading Penny Alley posters. Take a look at this one. Reward, $8,000 in gold coin will be paid for the recovery of Nancy Curtis, captured by Cheyenne Indians. 8,000 bucks. A lot of men are willing to take chances for a share of that kind of money. Better be careful of Mr. Favor. I don't want Mr. Favor. All I want is some of his men. Just up ahead. Sure, you want to stop. Sometimes old scars don't heal as hard as you think. It's been a long time, Mr. Favor. I wanted to see it. It's a kitchen you're in, Mr. Favor. Parlor was right here. I remember my wife used to like to sit there by the fireplace. Little Linda, she was just five. I married kind of late. They're both buried right off there. Been a long time. Was it Cheyenne Collins? That's right. Cheyenne. I'm afraid it's the time we got moving. Sure, Mr. Favor. Sure. Mr. Favor. Put this up. Take it. You have anything to do with this? Don't know nothing about it, boss. Read it, though. Enough to make the gall rise and anybody calls himself a man. Yeah, let's forget it. We're driving beeves, nothing else. A whole bunch of tracks leading away from the herd. I figure we're missing about a dozen steers. Whoever cut them out was riding ponies, probably Cheyenne. Where at? 
that bend back about a mile. I guess they used the hills for cover. I'd better take a look. Look, them Cheyenne are right on our tail. There's probably a whole lot more of them back there. I just want to see what's going on. Well, that's my job. It would have been if you hadn't got so messed up. Let Rowdy know where I am. <laughs> back a ways. We're pushing the herd. Do you know what I'm saying? I know. You are the chief? Trevor's. My name's Favor. Manso. Cheyenne chief. Uh, some of your uh, people took a bunch of our steers. I ride to your herd. Pay for them. Pay? We are not thieves. The steers aren't mine to sell, though. We need steer for eating. Hunting has been poor. But I, uh, I just can't sell them. You people, some of you, but most of you come to kill. Nothing but kill. Not most of us, to some of us. Too many, some of us. I learned the white man way. My father, he thought your way might be better. I do not think so. Sorry. You are not sorry. But I think you have more understanding than the others. Nancy Curtis. You understand the name Indian? Nancy Curtis. I don't care about them mother captives. Keep them. Nancy Curtis means something to me. You know what I mean? If you hear me, I asked you a name, Indian. Nancy Curtis. <coughs> you beginning to get the name now? Nancy Curtis. She a captive of yours. told you to leave the herd. Well, we thought you might need a little help. Let him go, Hug. Look, Mr. Favor, these Cheyenne, they got white captives, women, slaves. What's wrong with trying to find out something about them? You're hired on to drive herd. Nothing else. That's what's wrong. Let's get back to it. Why you do this? Oh, I don't hire my men on to make trouble. Those two disobey? Maybe they didn't understand so good. Kill them. You are chief. Can't do that. But maybe now they'll understand a little bit better. I think you will be sorry. <laughs> uh. 
Banana. Banana! Went through. Good. I take your gun. Koralama. Zappa. Koralagan. Larana. You have bad people. I also have bad people. You don't let them stay... stay bad for very long. Cheyenne Law, I say we come hunt, not fight. I am chief. He dies. How are you? How you feel? Oh, good enough to get in the saddle. Get back to the herd. It's all right with you. No, no, no. Renoka, Haraki. What's up? Where you been anyway? I'm trying to help the boss. You never helped anybody in your life. You keep out of this, Nolan. Mr. Favor got caught by the Cheyenne. We're coming to get help. You better mount up. We'll show you where he is. Now, wait a minute. You mean you saw him get caught and you didn't try to do anything about it? I told you to stay out of this. Well, you're coming, or ain't you? Wait a second. Hold on, Daggett. You said you used to be a bounty hunter. We go and find a bounty poster stuck on the wagon. Who are you, anyway? And who gave you permission to leave the herd? You want to sit still for this? Waiting around while a Cheyenne go to work on your boss, huh? You got a way of lying to get what you want, Daggett. I think you're lying now. Mr. Favor knew those Cheyenne were out there, and he's got sense enough to keep them getting caught. Yeah, well, we've been in tough situations before. Anyway, the rule is we stay here. We stay right here with the herd. That's Mr. Favor's rule. We've got no room for troublemakers around here, Daggett. You're fired. How you are, too. You got the boss? Suppose we don't want to be fired. I guess you think you got a choice. What about the pay we got coming? Step over the wagon. Water. Water. Good. What's your name? You understood when I... when I said water. Water? No. no. Your skin. Very white. I'm 
I'm not giving Daggett anything. It's been 24 hours since the ball's left. <sighs> Look, Pete, I know how you feel, but we're sticking with the herd. This is Cheyenne country. He's out there alone, Rowdy. Well, I'm betting on the boss. You didn't come up with anything yesterday when you were out hunting for him. I told you that's because night come on to me too quick. Let's get the men and go back and look for him. Leave this herd wide open. We're staying right here, Pete. Look out there. It's Mr. Favor bringing back the beef. Manso, chief of Quay, Cheyenne. What are you doing with those cattle, anyway? Bring them back. Promise your chief. What do you mean? Your chief, Favor, got hurt. He's all right. Back two, three days. Well, where is he? He is all right. Let him go. Let him go? Rowdy, do you believe him? He brought the cattle back. Oh. Hello. Water? No. No, thanks. Not now. Not now. You understand that? Not now. My name's Favor. It's me, my name. You? Winoka. Winoka. Winoka, did you ever have other name? Other name? Yes, like, like Nancy. Nancy? Nancy. Wanoka, what about your other name? My name, Winoka. Other name, like Nancy? Nancy Curtis? Nancy Curtis. How does that sound to you? I don't know. Oh, don't worry. It'll all come back. Look, have you got anything, something that, that isn't Cheyenne? Um, here, I'll, I'll show you. Ring, um, necklace. No, uh, not Cheyenne. Uh, bracelet, uh, necklace. When you, very small. Curtis. Me? Not much doubt. You have a family. Family? Are there more here that are like you? Not here. Main camp. Maybe ten. Sapa, Manso, you can't keep white people with your tribe against their will. We do not keep them here against their will. What about her and the others? I know they're captives. They slaves? Winoka is no slave. You ask her. Winoka, do you know what slave means? Slave? 
peinó. Me no slave. Araki. No, no, we're not. Stay, please. I do not want to fight you. I want my people to have peace with yours. I want the same thing. I just think that Winoka ought to have a choice of staying here or being with her own people. We are her people. We have raised her since she is this way. We are her family. You've got to understand, her real parents are still alive and they want her just as you would want your child. They've never given up searching for her. I don't know how you got a hold of her, but you must have taken her from her people by force. It was war. While my men hunt, the white soldiers raid our village, kill our women, old men, and children. Then we make our own raid. We kill. But we do not kill women and children. We bring children back to take places of those we have lost. I understand. But she should still have the right to choose. Staying here, she'll, she'll never know which kind of a life is better for her. Winoka, will you come with me to your own people? I want to stay with my people. You see? No, Matt, so. The decision isn't up to you or to me or, or even to her until she's had a chance to decide for herself. You will leave here, Mr. Faber. But I'll come back, Manso. And if you still refuse to leave her go, I'll have other men with me. You save my life. I save your life. I respect you. When we meet again, we meet as enemy. You get on down there. Stop the herd. Call all the men together. You all right? Yeah. Sure. Oh, Pete. I'll want to see Daggett and Hawk first thing. You can't do that, boss. They ain't here. Probably fired them. Good. Hold him up, will you, Jim? Then come on back to Chuck Wagon. Right. Hold up, Bruce Brown. Hold up, Mr. Favors back. Where you been, Mr. Favor? He'll tell you when he gets ready. You gonna want some help getting down? Uh, I better stay where I am. I got more riding to do. I 
just come back from the camp of the Cheyenne. I got hurt, they took good care of me. The chief's a good man, and he doesn't want war. Only trouble is, he's got a captive, a white girl. Didn't want to let her go. Maybe she wants to go home, maybe not. The point is, she hasn't really got a choice. I want to go back and get her. I'll need some help. Some of you want to come along with me. I've got nothing to do. I'll go, Mr. Faber. You got a man here? Me too. I'll take a crack at them Cheyenne. Boss, you ain't really serious about this. We can let them know at Fort Davis. They'll take care of it. It'll take a couple of weeks. Cheyenne will be gone by then. But you're risking the herd stirring up them Cheyenne. Pete. Well, boss, I want to go with you. I want to see that captive set free too. But we've come this far with the herd. Pete, that's the reason I want the herd to push on. The ones who stay here with me will be volunteering. We'll have to take our chances on ever getting back to the herd. I say we go after them, Cheyenne. Free that girl. Is that girl's name Nancy Curtis, Mr. Favor? It is. Roddy, you take over the herd. I'll take eight men, no more. Take them long to get out of here. What chance we got of following them? Cheyenne move, they move fast. We got no chance at all. Glad you're here. I don't know if I glad or not. Why'd you come? The sight of you, your words, make me remember. Remember what? I don't know. But others have talked to me in your words long time past. Your words make me want to go back. Don't you worry about it. We'll see that you get back. Back to your family. How will it be? Maybe when they see me, they don't want me. No. no you're going to be all right. Cheyenne, all I know, maybe I get lost in between. Maybe family won't like me. Miss. Now, Miss, don't you worry about your family not liking you. They're gonna fall all over themselves. Now, they'll hug you so tight you won't be able to take two breaths in a row. Now, don't you worry, not a bit. Thank you. Mr. Favor. Them Cheyenne ain't gonna take this kindly, us having that girl. No, and this ain't the best spot for holding off an attack either. Mr. Faber, that girl there, she Nancy Curtis? That's right. Well, there's $8,000 reward for her. What's that got to do with you? Well, I rode in that Cheyenne camp with you, Mr. Faber. I took my chances along with the rest of us. I figure part of that money belongs to me. You didn't find her. She walked in of her own accord. Well, that's unfair, Mr. Faber. Somebody's entitled to that reward. I think the rest of the drovers feel the same way. Is that right? I figure I got something coming, boss. How many of you feel you have to collect for this? All of us, Mr. Faber. Let them speak for themselves. All right, how about it? That's about the way we feel, boss. You want me to pay them off now? As of now. Scarlet, too. 
That's all for me? You firing us, Mr. Faber? I want you out of this camp as quick as you draw your money. Your men leave because you're kind to me? Oh, who's kind to leave anyway? They would not. But you would let them leave before you would turn me away. With pleasure. It's an everyday thing, letting them go. I do not believe you. How are we going to get along losing this many men? We'll get along. Pay them off. You think he's got more with him? Let him come in. I come for Winoka. She's here because she wants to be here. I bring back your cattle. It is right. Now you give me Winoka. She's made her own choice. My people come to hunt. I have hunters all around. I set fires. Hunter. They come warrior. That'll have to be up to you. Manso, you have been good, kind to me, but... Speak your own tongue. I speak the tongue of my people. Cheyenne are your people. I love Cheyenne, all of them. But look at the others. I am like them. I see only men, Winoka. Am I not a man? The finest, bravest, but these are my own kind. It is not for you to decide. I take Winoka. She stays here, Manso. Guarding the girl at all times. Break out the rifles. Plenty of ammunition. Money. Still think we ought to be fired, Mr. Favor? Get your money. Get out. Boss, will you listen to me a minute? That girl ain't even sure she wants to go with us. I know you think you're right about this, but it could be the means of us all getting wiped out. Well, let's hope not. Well, the odds are where they are. What else can we expect? You can't fight every battle with the odds in your favor, Pete. It'll take men so a while to get his braves together. We'll get out first thing in the morning. Uh, morning, old Quince. How do you feel this morning? Sleepy. Quince? Yeah. Wake up the girl, tell her to for breakfast. Sure, Bob. Morning, Mr. Traver. How do you feel this morning? Fine, thanks, Wish. Yeah, some good hot coffee, that's what you need. She's gone, Mr. Faber. Gone? I don't know how she got away without us knowing it. Well, lived with the Indians, didn't she? Well, why would she do a thing like that? Maybe went back to the Cheyenne. Probably figured she was making too much trouble for us. She could get real lost in this country. Yeah, get the horses settled. Tell Pete. Yes, sir. out here alone. From now on, I'm going to take care of you. Please, let me go. I go back. Monso will not attack Mr. Favor. Please, don't stop me now. Please. Let $8,000 go after all this time? Not a chance. Come on, your money in the bank.
company John do here? Five or six of them. Horses are all shod, so they ain't shy. And... Yeah, Beckstrom and the others. The favor? What do you want, Scarlet? I left him, Mr. Favor. I don't want any part of Daggett's play. Daggett? Him and Halk was camped to Watering Hole we came to. We joined up. I didn't think it was wrong, but I do now. How's the girl? Daggett's acting like he owns her, acting like he's going to take his own good time getting her back to her folks. You want to show us where they are? I can show you where they was and I left. <laughs> That's no good, boss. Ever since we crossed that loose sand back there where the track's blown away, I've been guessing. Fellas? I don't know. I didn't think it'd be too hard to trace them, the spot I led you to. There's something that ain't too hard to trace. It looks like your Cheyenne friend's calling in his braves. Pete, you and the others get on back to the herd. What about you? Chase down that smoke signal. Well, good luck. Winoka? No. You come to die? I come for help. Help? Winoka's gone. Bounty hunters have her. Your people are all around. I figure you have the best chance of finding her. They are the same man who beat me? The same. And there's more men with them. Badagan. Karalana. Come. Men, find them. How are you so sure? See flash there. Other there. What we look for is between. before your people come. Maybe a little time, maybe more. That may be too late. I'm going in. You're not wise when you not kill them. You're not wise now. Go before my hunters come. seen you all the way. Get their guns. Visitors, huh? You come to get it? We've come to get you. 
You might be something as a trail boss, favorite, but you weren't smart coming here. You and your friend probably got others coming, so we're not going to hang around. And we can't be bothered with you. I guess I had enough of them, Mr. Faber. Of course, I know that don't go against my not listening to you, against my walking out on you. Not good, fight. Not good. You're not going to hand us over to them, are you, Mr. Favor? You know, you know what they'll do to us. You want us punished. Hand us over to the law, the white man's law. You turn them loose unarmed. They can't do any harm. Go. Oh, Teddy. I'm a little short-handed. Uh, you can come along with me if you want. Thanks, Mr. Favor. Mm. So, uh, you take real good care of her. You tell my family I'm alive. I'm thinking of them, but maybe not tell them where I am. Winoka. Monso say I come with you. He want what best for me. Maybe best for Cheyenne people, too. They no longer alone on the prairie. White men come in like waters in the spring flood. Maybe no more Cheyenne law, like so many Cheyenne warriors gone. Monso say he sent others later. Monso's a wise man. Fine and brave man. I was to be his bride in awe. You want to ride with me? I would like to. are senseless, stupid beasts. They go halfway across a continent just to be slaughtered. The trouble is, nobody ever trained them to go alone. It takes men to push a herd north. Men and time and sometimes pain. That's where I come in. I'm one of the men. Gil Favor, trail boss. Used to it, keep some of hair things in that. Jasper's crazy. 
I don't see any papers on him. Here's a photograph. What happened? He tried to kill me. Well, what for? Well, how would I know? Beats about time to bed down the herd anyway. We'll find out who he is when he comes around. That is, if he can tell us. Jim, Joel, let's put him to bed. Hey, boss. What have you done? We were just protecting ourselves, miss, and it took some doing at that. Harry? Harry? He'll come around all right. I'm sorry I had to bat him with a gun, but he didn't leave us much choice. Well, I'll answer for anything he did, any damage he caused. We took this off of him. Oh, that's my husband, Mr. Whitman's son. I'm Rose Whitman. Mrs. Whitman, my name's Favor. How do you do? I live at a ranch about a mile east from here. If you can help me get Harry into the buggy, I think we'll be able to make it home without trouble. Why don't trouble. you just rest here a while first? I'll have one of the men ride over and let your husband know what's happened. My husband passed away six months ago. Oh, sorry. Well, maybe I could ride back to your ranch and bring back one of your hands. Well, Mr. Whitman and I live alone now. Well, I'd better go with you myself, then. Oh, no, there's no need for that. Mr. Whitman isn't always as violent as you just saw him. When his mind is clear, he's one of the gentlest people on Earth. He sure comes close to being one of the strongest. He was the strongest once, when he was a young man in the ring. So that's what he was doing, boxing, huh? He was a champion of England and Ireland. Sometimes when he hears something that reminds him of the day he was beaten, he loses control. I think maybe the shouting of your riders. Feeling all right? Harry? Harry, this is Mr. Favor and... Rowdy, Yates. They're friends of mine, Harry. I don't think Mr. Whitman is quite himself yet. I wonder, might I take you up on that offer after all? Well, certainly, Mrs. Whitman. Rowdy, you let the men know I'll be gone for a while, and then you follow on after us. Right. Not a word. Well, blame the silence on me, Mr. Favor, not Harry. No blame to anybody. Big was the first champion. Then came Pipes. Then Gritton. Then Broughton. That's right. Aye. And I broke Tom Hyer's jaw in that 30th round. Boston, 1846. You know, he was a very good man. I promised to meet him again. And, uh, of course, you know, I've got to soak these knuckles a little more. You see, they're not ready yet. Did it hire send it to me? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, it's his jaw. See, he needs more time for it to heal. Now, don't lie to him. I, I don't want him to feel small or baggy. Just tell him that I'm not ready either. Here's John's picture, Harry. It fell out of your pocket. If you're going back in training, you'll need your sleep. Ah, there's a son to be proud of. A little small for bare knuckle fighting, but a fine heart, a good brain. Aye. You're breaking training, Harry. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, gentlemen, for saying good night so early, but if you have the prize ring, you'll understand. Oh, we understand. Harry sleeps in the barn. He loves the smell of the hay. Mrs. Whitman, I know it's none of my business, but shouldn't you have a couple of hired hands around in case anything happens? It isn't that easy to find someone you can trust nowadays. Well, our trail map says we're close to a town named Rock Point. Don't you have any friends in there you could have come out? I don't get into Rock Point very often. 
My husband and I moved here just a month before he died. We never had a chance to make many friends. Aren't you worried about your safety? Oh, nothing will happen to me. You'll stay for supper. I have a stewing chicken. It'd sure be a relief from Wishbone Stew, but uh, we got work to do. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Well, thanks for putting yourself to all that trouble on my account. No trouble. We'll uh, tie up your team before we leave. Thank you. You're afraid, Harry. You're afraid, Harry. Get on your feet and fight. Coward. Get up, coward. Get up, coward. I was in the barn. How did I get here? Well, you were walking in your sleep. You fell against the rain barrel. Oh. Now you go in the house and get some towels. Dry yourself off before you catch your death. Yeah. All right. Nobody would believe it unless they'd seen him in one of his spells. Mrs. Whitman, what are you going to do about this? I don't know. My husband used to say if he got any worse, we should commit him to a territorial asylum, but... You know, it's strange. There's been a federal judge holding court here in town for the last week. I felt like taking Harry to him and having the judge commit him, but... I backed away from it. Judge gone yet? No, he'll be there until tomorrow afternoon. Well, it isn't a very easy decision to make. Well, it better become easy to decide, and real quick, too. Well, everybody in town likes Harry. I wouldn't have any witnesses. You've got two witnesses right here. The herd could get along without us for a day, anyway. Yeah, and there's that uh, stew and chicken that you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, Roddy and I could sleep in the barn, go into town with you first thing in the morning. Well, uh, it'll be better. It'll be better for him. You know, I'd almost forgotten that luxury. What luxury, Mrs. Whitman? Having a man make up my mind for me again. Nice behaved town. Folks usually make a carnival out of court week. Carnival there. A few months ago, the town elected a new marshal. He's a fire and brimstone man. It was his intention to make this town spotless. He do seem to be a man of his word. Well, look who's come to town. Hey, now. The only real woman in Rock Point. That's what them who knew her up in Abilene say. We had us a few buttes like that down to the keg house. Before your brother started scrubbing this town. You shut up about him. Well, I'll shut up, but if it wasn't for Marshall Thompson, we'd have us a town. Instead of a graveyard. I 
thought the marshal had run her out of town. Not that one. She's too brazen to run. Just so you'll know, I worked in the Crystal Palace Saloon in Abilene. I warned my husband how people would feel. I'm sorry, Harry. We don't need these outsiders to help us, Rose. Let me stay. Everything will be all right. You'll see. The judge has a reputation for being a very smart man, Harry. We'll let him decide. a lot more of you in Abilene, Rose. Get your hands off me. Since when you have been so fussy? All right. Break it up. Break it up. You're under arrest, mister. For what? For starting a rough house. A what? It'll be a fine. Five dollars. It's worth it. Give that to the clerk. See that you get a receipt. Oh, Rose. These two saddle tramps working for you? We're pushing a herd north on the Sedalia Mazora Trail, mister. I haven't heard anything about a herd. Maybe you ain't been listening. Yes, he listens. Anything anybody says against me, he listens. Better not crowd her, Lou. She's one of our kind. Any of you people ever see these two before? I've never seen them, Lou. Maybe good at dealing cards or spinning roulette wheels? He's got it in his mind I'm going to open a saloon. Any man befriends me, he figures got to be a card dealer or a stick man I'm bringing in. Greg, how about it? You seen these two before? In Silver City, I saw a man that looked like this one. Uh, I'm not sure. They smell like cowpokes. But you only have to walk through a cow yard to smell like that. Until you find somebody who's sure, we got business here and you're holding us up. Now, just a minute. I'll take the guns. No, you won't. You're violating the law. No wearing of firearms within the limits of Rock Point. Give me the guns. You'll do a lot better, mister, if you ask nice. Do what the man says, Rowdy. Hear ye, hear ye. The First District Court of the United States is now in session. Judge James Cuff presiding. All right, court's open. First case. Your Honor. Yes? We'd appreciate it if you'd put the Whitman case at the top of your list. Well, what's your reason for this request? Mr. Yates and I are witnesses for Mrs. Whitman, but we're also pushing the herd north, and we're kind of pressed for time. Well, all right. If there are no objections, we'll take the Whitman case. Well, ma'am, what's your complaint? Well, Your Honor, this is pretty difficult for Mrs. Whitman. Maybe I could talk for her? Maybe you can. That is, if it's all right with her. Is it, ma'am? All right, go ahead and speak. Well, Mrs. Whitman is here about her father-in-law, Harry Whitman. Yeah, well, get on with it. She wants the court to make out papers to put him in the territorial asylum. She wants what? Now, Marshal, I must remind you that this is a court of law. You get your chance to talk at the proper time. I'd better. What is your reason for this request, ma'am? Well, for the last few months, especially since my husband died, Mr. Whitman has been getting continually worse. He's growing dangerous. I think it would be better for him to be put away somewhere where he can be taken care of. What's the matter, Rose? You getting tired of sitting up with the old man? And now I saw the man that said that. I want you to shut your mouth, mister, and keep it shut. I want to remind you again that this is a court of law. And dignity is going to be maintained as long as I'm in charge. What do you mean by dangerous, ma'am? 
Well, he came mighty close to killing me, Judge. What kind of a filthy railroading trick is this? I've seen a lot of miserable human beings in my life, but these three beat them all. I know this woman, Judge. The whole town knows her. Sure, she wants to put the old man away. She's no nursemaid. But why don't you listen to the witnesses? What witnesses? A couple of saddle traps you picked up off the trail to do you a favor? You sit down. Sit down. Quiet. Old man. Do you know why you're here, old man? Well, it looks like my daughter-in-law has been listening to some outsiders who think I ought to be put away, sir. Uh, what is your name? My name is Harry Whitman. How old are you, Harry? I'm 62. Uh, do you know what day of the week you was born on? I was born on Monday, December the 10th. Sir. Now, Harry, I'm going to ask you a very strange question. Do you know the difference between heat lightning and fork lightning? I, I don't know what makes the difference, but I know how the difference looks. Heat lightning lights up all the skies, but fork lightning makes jagged streaks like that. Mm -hmm. Harry, what town are you in? In Rock Point, sir. Do you think you know the difference between right and wrong? Yes, sir. Uh, Harry, suppose you were a judge and two men were brought up in front of you, both of them claiming the same pig, what would be the first thing you'd do? Well, I'd find out which one was the liar. <laughs> Suppose both of these men had a reputation for honesty, for telling the truth. Uh, then I'd kill the pig. Why, Harry? Well, because I'd sit them down both together to make friends over a nice pork dinner. <laughs> <laughs> This man is just as sane as anybody in this place. Petition denied. Judge, you're making a mistake. There are a great many bare-knuckle fighters back east in this man's condition. Now, they don't put them away there, and I don't intend to put them away here. I don't know about that, but I do know that I saw him try to kill Mrs. Whitman. Look, Judge, it's for his own good as well as for hers. I can find no evidence on which to commit Harry Whitman to an institution. Case dismissed. Please, please, it's best for him. He doesn't want to kill anybody. Uh, nobody here knows what he's like when he's not in his right mind. It's best for him. Anybody here ever see Harry try to kill? No. 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 She's trying to send him away. Just do as I say. Harry? I don't want to talk to you. Leave me alone. Let's have our guns, Marshal. Leaving us already, cowherds? For a while, Marshal. A while? You're leaving for good. Tell me, what is it makes you folks in this town so friendly? Long, hard hours of practice? You called it. Practice and experience. It's taken us a long time to scrub up this town, and we don't aim to have it all dirtied up by a couple of two-bit saddle tramps from off the Sedalia Trail. Tell you something, Marshal. Seeing the way you treat your neighbors in this town, I know one thing. Don't worry about dirtying up your town. Couldn't get any filter than it is. We 
want to tell you how sorry we are about how it turned out. If there's anything we can do. Mrs. Whitman, if It's I... best to leave her alone, I guess. Don't worry about me. Tears in a woman aren't always what you think. Scum like that isn't worth crying over. I'm used to that kind. There's no reason why you should be. You know Abilene, Mr. Favor? Some. Have you ever been to the Crystal Palace? Yes, ma'am. Johnny came in there one night to play Pharaoh. I sat down next to him, and he said I brought him luck. He'd just brought his ranch, and he was on his way to pick up his father. He asked me to marry him. And I wasn't afraid either. Rock Point don't know Harry the way I do. I saw his face after the judge handed down his decision. I know, I saw him. It wasn't very pretty. His mind was clear as a bell. Well, you, you can't just go back to the house and wait for him. Well, I can't run. I won't run. The only thing my husband asked was that I take care of his father until he dies. And I promised. I mean to take care of him, Mr. Faber, until he dies. Or until you do? I'll tell you exactly what'll happen. Harry will mope around in the hills for a few days. He'll come back, and everything will be just as it was. I... I sure hope you're right, Mrs. Whitman. You, you both have been very kind, and, and I'm very thankful. But if you're seen with me again, it'll just make things worse. Goodbye. Goodbye. You believe what she said about the old man coming back, acting natural? What's more important, she doesn't believe it either. But she asked us out of it. She must have good reason. We could use some wheels. Our wagons are all crippled. Hey there! Is you what you claim, drovers? That's right. The marshal claims you're here to start a saloon with Rose Whitman. The marshal's a liar. The marshal's my brother. Well, then, you've got a liar in the family. <laughs> no, not Brother Lou. He's too upright for lies. For wheels. Sorry. Used to be a friendly town. Well, now, whenever was that? Before Lou Marshall made himself Mr. Law and Order in person. You mean there's nobody to stand in his way? The whole cemetery full of people stood in the Marshall's way. That's a good wheel. I got a dozen of them. We could use three if you could lend us a wagon to hold them in. Seven dollars apiece. It's good enough. Twenty-one. There's nobody in this town who side with a woman who needs help. Point is, mister, you side with her, the marshal just figures you're siding against him. Well, now, you think the marshal could stand it if uh, you rolled a wheel alongside of us? Wagner's just outside. Let's have it. How long are you going to keep milling this thing around your mind like a cat wearing a rat? Be all right if we take the wheels back to camp before we go back to town? Yeah.
Why, what's the matter, Mrs. Whitman? Nothing. Well, you don't look like it's nothing. Your voice don't sound right, neither. I'm worried about Harry. He's up in the hills. I'm afraid something might happen to him. Oh, yeah. Well, what you need is a man around this place. I mean, someone else and Harry. I know. Well, you know, I... I just never rest if I didn't try to apologize for the way my brother and the rest of them Clydes acted toward you in court this morning. <laughs> you know, Brother Louie, he just don't understand human beings. I think a lot of people are getting sick and tired of his ways. But I, uh, I didn't come here just to apologize for my brother. I came to help. Help? Yeah. You haven't got enough money to take care of yourself and that father-in-law of yours forever. I want to help you get enough so you can. How? You want to get back east, don't you? You let go don't of you? me. You want to get back east and dress like a lady and spend money like you were something? Is that it, huh? Is there anything wrong with that? No. No. The only thing wrong is... You can't do it. Not with a millstone around your neck. <laughs> and that old man is a millstone, isn't he? You just can't shake him loose. What are you getting at? How much you figure this house and the barn, livestock and acreage is worth? Five. What you trying to do with them drovers? Of course, the right smart ideas. Too bad they're testing. riled up. And suppose I got him to act like that right smack in the center of town, in front of a whole flock of witnesses, in front of my brother. Now, if the town told the judge they saw Harry acting like that, the judge would have to send him away. A lot of high living on $4,000. Dave? That's fine, Rose. Fine. We got us a bargain? Yes. You'll find him up in the hills above the North Road. He always goes up there to brood like a child or a dumb animal. But you haven't told me, Rose. what I do? How do I get him riled up? All those years in the ring. He was in too long. Whenever he remembers that last time when they had to carry him out and took him two days to regain his senses, now, wait a minute, Rose. I don't want to take advantage of you. I want this thing straight and above board. You got a pencil and paper? Sit down. All you have to do is to write down that when and if you make a sale of this property after it's yours, I'm to get half. You see, I'm like you, Rose. I want to get away. 
away from this stinking town, too. And with $4,000, I can stay away for a long time. Or we could stay away for a long time. Why don't you tell me, Harry? What are you doing out here? Well, where else is there to go? Well, they give you a hard time in town. Yeah. They don't understand. Nobody understands. I just want to fight again, even if it killed me. But the doctors say no. Yeah, sure, I know. Now, nah, don't you worry about it anymore. Hyas did it. He knocked me out in that thirtieth round in Liverpool. See, I broke his jaw in Boston. And then I gave him another fight in Liverpool. He hit me so hard that I had to go to hospital. Some of the people said that I fell down on purpose. No. Yeah. I but some said I was a coward. People got no right to say that to you. I just want to fight again. I'll tell you what. I'll set you up a fight. Then you can show them all. Huh, Harry? Dave. You're my friend, Dave. We don't want to go in there. We're going to show them. You said we're going to show them. I know, I know, but I want to set it up, see? We got to do this thing right, Harry boy, so everyone will know you're still champion. Now, come on. Ah, look at that. They got the ring and the dressing rooms locked up. <laughs> That's my boy. Now you, uh, you go on in there and lie down, Harry. You get yourself some rest while I arrange things. Oh, you're good to me, Dave. It's a long time since anybody understood me. But my son understood me. He wouldn't allow anybody to call me a coward while he was alive. Everything's going to be all right, Harry boy. You just rest up. Now, I'm going to close the door so no one will bother you. What are you doing? This, this is not a dressing room. This is your brother's jail. You're absolutely right, Harry. This is a jail. Well, why'd you lock the door? This is where you belong. Jail! What do you mean? What are you doing, Dave? This is what they do to quitters, Harry. Cowards! They lock them up! Oh, Dave, don't fool me. You know I'm all right. Sometimes I get mixed up a bit. And I've been hit so many times that sometimes I feel myself in, in the ring. I can see the lights go on and they go off again. Oh, sometimes I get mixed up so that I don't, just don't know where I am. But I'm all right, Dave. Let me out. You ain't never gonna get out, Harry. Not till you prove you can fight. Let me out! Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Harry! Harry! Let me out of look here. at this over here! Look Let here! Me out of here. Look! Your picture's everywhere! And all the newspapers! Let Harry Whitman, king of the flopbacks! Oh, let me out of here! Come on! Look here! I'm the champion of England and Ireland. Everybody knows me. I'm Harry Whitman. He was the first champion. Then came Pipes. Then Griffin. Then, then, then Broughton. And I broke Tom Hyas' jaw in the 30th round. That was a fight. That was a fight when I broke his jaw. Let me out of here. Wait. Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on, champ. Hire's waiting to beat you to a pulp. 
I think I'll go home. You can't go home. Your son's gone. Don't you remember? He can't help you now. Leave me alone. Give me that picture. Come on, get up and fight, you miserable old fall down. Give me that picture. What kind of a champion were you? You're afraid to fight higher, ain't you? Ain't you? If you ain't scared, come on, let's see how you fight or fall down. Give me that picture. It's Dave Thompson. What is this? Sorry, Moose. It's dead. Dave. Dave! Come away from him, Lou. Two of you. Carry him inside. You had to come back, didn't you, Satyatran? You couldn't leave the thing alone. It took two of you to do it. this all wrong, Marshal. He was already dead when we came here. Here, he knows that. Well, speak up, you drunken Jasper. Look, Marshal, we're leaving the same way we came in. Somebody tries to stop us, somebody gets hurt. You two are gonna beg to die. I had plans for Davy. This was gonna be a decent town for him to grow up in. No more temptation. There's a tree down at the end of the street. Come on. Wait, wait. Luke, you can't do this. These men couldn't have killed Dave. Who else could have killed him? I loaned them my wagon this afternoon. I seen them ride out of town. They came back, didn't they? Well, that doesn't mean it. Lou, you cleaned up this town. Now, you can't do this. Better go on home, Mel. You're in my way. Maybe it's just as well I am in your way. Lou, it's been a long time since anybody tried to talk sense to you around here. You're pushing me, Mel. It was Dave they killed. Who said? Tanner, he, he just said that Dave was dead. Tanner saw them. He didn't say he saw it. Well, don't just stand there. Tell him the truth. They couldn't have done it. I stumbled over Dave on, on my way home. He was dead then. I ran to the barn. I saw these fellows pull up. And if they didn't do it, who did? I seen, I seen Harry Whitman run off as I come up. Harry. Harry Whitman. That's right. Harry Whitman. Anybody know where the old man might be? He only has one place to go. Anybody that follows me tonight is a deputy, right now. Thompson, you already made one bad mistake. Don't make another. You men, don't let him lead you into this. Thanks to both of you for what you did. The old man went back to the farm. He's going after Rose. Better get there before they do.
He did it, Harry. He's the one who made me do it. Come for the old man. You're bound and determined to lynch somebody. Is that it, Thompson? Doesn't matter much who. Me, Harry Whitman, anybody. Harry killed Dave. A man out of his senses killed Dave. He's no more responsible for what he did than a, than a gun would be. It takes something to trigger it, just as it took something to turn Harry Whitman loose. Every one of you men in that courtroom, too deaf to listen to Rose Whitman, had a hand in Dave's death. You made Harry Whitman your responsibility, and then you went home and you forgot about it. You're the ones responsible for Dave Thompson's death. All right, you've been listening to this saddle tramp spouting off. Now listen to me. I'll tell you what killed Davey. Filth and sin. You're letting a madman, a dance hall woman, and a couple of cowherds butt into our way of life. I took your dirty little town and scrubbed it till its face shone, and I can do it again. It has to be done again. Come on. Well, come on. Are you going to let these two cowherds run your town? We came here to do justice. We ain't going to help you, Lou. Time somebody stood up to you, you ain't any good for us anymore. Maybe you were once, but you're not anymore. Lou, we're not forgetting what you did for us. Sure, you cleaned up the town. You, you tamed it when it was wild. You made it a better place to live in, but you didn't stop at that. You had to keep right on ruling with an iron hand till you were so scared. We... We've been living our lives just the way you wanted us to, doing everything you wanted us to do. Why do you think we came here with you tonight? To, to help you because of your brother? No. We're here because not one of us had the guts to stand up to you. We were too afraid to speak up when you wanted us to lynch Harry here. Thank you, mister, for standing up to him for us. Come on, Lou. Let's go home. Oh, Marshal Thompson, you're not going without Harry, are you? Not after what he did to your brother. No. Mel's right. I was going to lynch a man. I don't deserve this. Not anymore. We'll take Harry with us, Miss Whitman. We'll take him to the doctor. The doctor? What'll he do? Give him a pill, rest him up, and then send him back to me? I don't want him back here. I'm scared stiff of him. There's no call for you to talk like that, Rose. I'm not mad. Sometimes my brain is a little hazy, and my head aches. Sometimes the taunt of people makes me hear the howls from the crowd, and I feel the bare knuckles against my face and the back of my head. Then I gotta fight back, Rose. I'm not mad. You know that. I'm all right. Point is, Miss Whitman, maybe he won't have those spells anymore if the doctor treats him and rests him up. Well, none of us wants to see Harry sent away. You think those are just spells? I'll show you. Harry, do you know what they're all saying? They're all saying you're a coward. They're saying you're lying down because you're afraid. You're afraid of hire. They're all laughing, Harry, because they think you're a coward. Rose, it was you all along who wanted me put away. It was you that taunted me, you and Dave. I think you sent Dave to taunt me. Well, if it means that much to you, I'll go. I'll willingly go, Rose. Well, don't you want to say goodbye to me? She's 
did. Gentlemen, take me to the place you wanted me to go. I won't hurt you. I won't hurt anybody anymore. I her the most. At least I can do is stay with her for a while. Charlie? says every working cowhand has a string of horses assigned to him. That string's made up of the different kinds he's going to need. A circle horse, cutting horse, a roping horse, one or two broncs. He works with them, worries over them, and wouldn't be worth a brass nickel without them. Same goes for me, except my string isn't horses, it's men. I'm Gil Favor, trail boss. That new batch of sourdough is fermenting real good. Well, hallelujah. You don't sound pleased, Mr. Wishbone. It is in the nature of sourdough to ferment, and it's in the nature of a cook's louse to get excited about it. But it's not in my nature to stand up and cheer just because a keg of sourdough. Mr. Wishbone, the geese. Now, like I was saying, well, they're playing the wrong way for this time of the year. The geese never was much for reading calendars. Now, like I was saying, you're right. That's a big one, Mr. Favor. It's a prairie fire takes hold in this kind of country. It's always a big one. Hey, boss. We've seen it. It's coming our way, though. Traveling a lot faster than we are. The wind might shift. And it might not. Beat, how far back can you say that fire is? I'd say about 20 miles. We got six or eight hours at the most. Is there a river ahead? Yeah, but there's not enough water to stop a prairie fire. Rowdy, you start moving the herd up. They're pretty well rested. You can get a lot more speed out of them. Quince, get back to the drag. Start moving them up. That is done. Prairie fire that size can burn a herd down to its hooves in an hour. Beat. You and me got to find a river big enough to stop that fire and a spot on it shallow enough to get the herd across. Let's go. Burning, no change of the wind. Splitting up would double our chances. We're not getting any second ones, neither. husband ain't home. Well, I just wanted some information, ma'am, about uh, 
best place to cross the river with a herd of cattle. I wouldn't know nothing about that. How soon before your husband will be coming back? He's over at the fort, Helen Hines. Well, I, I, I could wait for him. Out in the house. Not while my husband's gone. I could wait for him outside if... It was late last night when my lord came home inquiring about his lady. And the only answer he received, she's gone with the gypsy Davy. Mrs. Walsh don't have a right good ear for music. Uh, it's too bad. Especially when her husband ain't home. My name's Lon Grant. Do a favor. I got a herd over in the Sedalia, Missouri Trail. Now, you've strayed, Mr. Favor. Well, there's a prairie fire sweeping up from the south. What do you know about the river? It's wide and wet. I bathe in it to take the stink of buffalo off me. I mean, uh, you know of a place that'd be shallow enough to make a cattle crossing? I ain't a native, mister. Came by this way three, four weeks ago. On my way from here to here. <laughs> Was off the job in the smokehouse, took it. And to my everlasting amazement, I'm keeping it. I'll be looking for that crossing myself. And that's your better. Unless you want to wait for Jeremiah. Yeah? Huh? Jeremiah, that's Mr. Walsh, who hunts buffalo, sells their meat and hides, <laughs> and who ain't home. Sound like he'd be home real quick, and with friends. Jeremiah ain't got any friends. Besides, he wouldn't give you the time of day. Why not? Jeremiah don't like men younger than 50. Because he's afraid his wife just might. Oh, I'd be looking for that crossing. There we are. All right, put your hands up. Looks like that crossing will have to wait. Next to him. I do believe he's mistook us for a band of raiding Comanches. Four men held up the army paymaster of the fort. They killed him and two guards. Four men? You must be seeing double. There ain't more than two of us. Three of you search the house. Do you think Mrs. Walsh is going to invite them in? You're way wrong. I haven't heard anything from you. No, oh, I don't argue with the army. There is no argument. That's right. My gun in your hand says so. Mister, I'm hunting killers. And the way I do it is to shoot first. And ask questions later. You got the word. Now let's see if you got any friends inside. Soldiers. Yeah, they must be looking for the people who killed the paymaster. In my house? Those people were heading this way. You heard that as well as me. What's that cowhand been doing around my place? Maybe he's one of the people. Well, you got a lot of cattle on the trail, mister, according to this logbook. But uh, somebody could steal a logbook, couldn't he? Wouldn't take much doing, would it? Afraid not. Now, uh, take this. A lot of writing in this book. Now, uh, here's an entry dated about three months ago. Thirteen beeves down this day. If we can't find water... All right, now you fill in, Mr. Trail Boss. If we can't find water, what? We're always short of water. Uh, what's the date of the entry? It says, about July 2nd. Thirteen beeves down this day. We can't find water. We can't find... I can't remember a thing like that. 
Well, neither could you if you had beef dropping up. Wait a minute, 13. 13, that was the unlucky day. That day, um... If we can't find water, uh, we'll dry herd the cattle until they drop or until we do. It's... It's 14 miles to Sykes' water hole. Yeah, that's it. You can read it in there. Yeah. That's in here, all right. No one but the man who wrote it could remember it. We got 3,000 head. There's a fire in back of the herd. There isn't anybody else in the house, Sergeant. All right, thank you. Ms. Walsh, I'm sorry I troubled you. Ain't anybody going to apologize to me? All right, men, mount up. Hello, Mr. Walsh. I uh, just searched the house. Had to because there were strangers around. One of them's my hired hand. Yes, so your wife told me. The other's a cattle drover. <laughs> sure lost his trail winding up here. Shut up. You get in the house. You get your gear together. Why, I'm not leaving. Yes, you are. There's your pay. That's your new hand? Well, what's it to you? Yep. I'm going to work for Mr. Walsh here. Matt Peel is your name. Guess I wasn't big enough for the job. Or was it old enough, Mr. Walsh? I told you to get your gear. <laughs> Stop fretting. I'm leaving. The stinker buffalo ain't got such a grip on me. <laughs> you go on along with him. He'll show you where to bed down. Sure will, Mr. Walsh. Trail boss. That's right. The nearest one's the Sedalia. And I got a herd on it. But there's a prairie fire burning up from the south. I was looking for a river big enough to stop it. You found it? What made you come calling? I gotta find a spot where I can make a cattle crossing on it. Jeremiah, I gotta put a coffee on the stove. I thought maybe you'd... You've been inviting people. Oh, I didn't invite nobody in the house. Did I, Mr. Favor? No, ma'am. But uh, seeing Mr. Walsh is home, we'd be mighty pleased if you'd come in and have a cup of coffee with us. Thanks, but I gotta be finding that crossing. A few minutes won't make much difference, will it, Jeremiah? I can tell you exactly where it is. I'd much appreciate that. That'll save you more time than you'd lose by drinking a cup of coffee with us. Well, uh... Please. Lesson, of course, Mr. Favor's already had a cup. No. No, not since leaving camp. Thanks, I'd, I'd be glad to. Searching that smokehouse layout across the way. And they didn't find us. We stay out in the open much longer. One of them army gangs gonna find us. So we don't stay out in the open. They was heading east. We're cut off from the hut. You know who's waiting there. Well, they got nothing on Rose. She got plenty on her. All them lovely greenbacks. We can't get along without them. Wes, that prairie fire's burning good. Fire to the south, army to the east. We can't stay out in the open. Not till dark, anyway. Barlow, you got the brain of a giant. There's only one place for us, don't it? What place is that? One they know we ain't in. That Buffalo Smokehouse. I delivered, did you, out of the job? Don't trouble your mind, Peter. I should have been on my way a long time ago. Is that sure? Kind of a fella I am. 
Roving, restless, needing affection. This ain't the kind of a place for my kind of fella. Uh-huh. What do you got in that bag? My gear. Drop it. I'm leaving. Now, don't try heating it at me. It wouldn't work. Unfasten your gun belt. And keep your hands on the buckle. Say, I... I ain't ever seen you before. Uh, most likely. Then this ain't anything personal? Uh, nothing personal. Say, you might be one of them outlaws that robbed the fort. That's right, Grandpa, I might be. Uh-huh. Kill two, three men? What are you trying to prove? You know how to count? Real good coffee, Mrs. Walsh. Oh, Jeremiah gets it at the army store at the fort. Hmm? Can I get you another cup? No, I gotta be leaving soon. That crossing's exactly half a mile below. Thanks, Mr. Walsh. I'll get it. Yeah, who do you think you are? You can't break into a man's house. Like, put up those guns, you hear me? I don't like nobody touching me. Then pay me heed. Pam, I want to get him some water. Let her go, Miller. He makes too much noise. See his house? I don't want it. I want your gun, though. No. Unbuckle your belt. All right. Now you tell me who everybody is. My name's Favor. Driving a herd. Who's noisy here? Walsh, a buffalo hunter. He owns his smokehouse. And the girl? Wife. She could have done better. You said you're driving a herd. You a trail boss? It's my trail log. This don't mean anything. Not a thing, whatever it says. Where's that door lead to? Bedroom. You wouldn't be lying, would you? You would be. This the lot of them? Yeah. All right, let's everybody sit down someplace, huh? I said sit down. Harder to jump a man when you're sitting, ain't it? Now, let's all understand each other. Them soldiers already been here. They're not likely to come back. That's your guess. I like the odds. Now, we can all sit around here till dark. Quiet and peaceable. And nobody gets any ideas. Because that wouldn't be smart. We're nervous. Just because you killed a couple of three men? Who are you? My name's Lon Grant. As I was saying, no trouble if nobody starts anything. That coffee smells real good, ma'am. I could use a cup myself. Hold it. Just let the lady do it. Put him down. Get off a shot, same as you. Want to try for it? Some other time, trail boss. Grant, get the guns. Sure.
big bad man didn't want a showdown, did he? You ain't very smart. The chances was even. Oh, they always have to be in your favor? They always are. Except this time. You know, mister, it's gonna be a real pleasure watching you hang. You sure you're gonna live that long? You, get up there with him. Walsh, help Grant and Peeler tie him up. seen me defend my home, my wife, real good, didn't you? There wasn't nothing you could do. They did something. I wonder how many men this gun killed in the back. I ain't been counting. Listen to me, trail boss, and learn something. I'm listening. There's a 73 bearing down on you right now, through the window. Put the guns down, Sonny, or be a hero. Say that, Jeremiah. You get the buffaloes every time, don't you? You don't want that trail boss bleeding to death in here. You better bandage him up, ma'am. All right, Cross, come on in. Where's Rose? I don't know. I never got to the hut. Why? West, there's soldiers all over, especially between here and the hut. They see you? I got back, didn't I? She don't know where we are, and we can't get to her. How is he? It's pretty bad. I'm glad Cross didn't kill you. Sonny here's about used up his bravery ration for the day, or maybe the whole year. So you're gonna have to run an errand for me. What's the errand? There's a hut a couple of miles down river from here. Sits back maybe 50 yards from the bank. There's a girl waiting there for me. Bring her here. What's to make her believe me? Your honest face. And this. Her name's Rose Morton. She's a lot prettier than that, but don't go getting any ideas. You wouldn't, you wouldn't stand a chance with that bad hand at all. And uh, if I bring her back, what happens then? Comes dark, we light out for the next border. Buffalo hunter here goes back to chasing buffalo and worrying about his wife. Sonny hits the road and Grandpa there stops shaking. And you get back to your herd. If you still got a herd and it ain't all ashes by then. All right. Wes? Yeah? Maybe the trail boss brings back a troop of soldiers. I ain't running south without Rose Trail, boss. Riding out of here, you might start thinking I'm trying to pull a bluff. You might think to yourself, he ain't gonna kill them people when he knows he ain't got a chance. Oh, I wouldn't think anything like that. Well, I'm just gonna make sure you don't. You don't need to prove anything. Shut up. Grandpa? Yeah. Oh, now, wait a minute, mister. I'm an old man, and I never did try to jump here like these other fellas did. Oh, I know that, Grandpa. All I want's a little advice. Advice? Oh. Sure, like, uh, which one ought to get it? Which one? That's right. You just point the one out to me. Oh, see, that's a terrible responsibility. I ain't gonna ask you twice. Well, in that case... I sure hate to do this, mister.
take pleasure away from anybody. And he said it was going to be a real pleasure watching me hang. Now you go, trail boss. You got just one hour to get her back here. And if you don't... I might get held up. You might, if you run into one of them cavalry patrols. So don't. A lot of these people's health's dependent on that. Parlor, go with him. See, he don't take no more than his own horse. Cross cover the window. Want me to put him? Just so he's out of sight. Smokehouse? The smokehouse. Miller, go with him. I wouldn't want him getting scared being alone with a corpse. You know, it's a funny thing about a fellow like Sonny. Real brave when he ain't got time to think what could happen to him. Lady, your husband's twice as much a man. In that opinion, I give you free. There's nothing you can tell me about Jeremiah I don't already know. Well, that's fine. Maybe your marriage will take on a whole new turn. If it lasts past the next hour, and it's going to be a long one. Where do you keep your liquor? Rose Norton? Yeah? I'm Gil Favor. He's supposed to come along with me. Oh? You're rushing things a bit, aren't you? Wes Thomas is. Who's he? Outlaw, a killer. Well, I don't recognize him from the description, mister. It's accurate, all right. You could have found that someplace. I could have found a cavalry patrol someplace, too, and brought them along. Why didn't Wes come for me? Too many soldiers running around. Where's your gun? Wes is keeping it for me. Oh, that's Wes, all right. You can tie your horse to the buggy. me up. You're trying hard to make me like you. Any reason I should? Most men think of lots of reasons. That is their problem. What happened to your hand? 
Well, Wes's friend shot me up. He must have been drunk. <laughs> because he didn't put it through your throat. Yeah. Ms. Walsh, maybe it's a good thing you're a married woman. I get a couple of drinks in me, and I'm a very affectionate man. Well, he wouldn't help you any. Cross from Barlow to kill him, right? Sure thing, Wes. With pleasure. Only thing is, I got a, I got a great respect for the sanctity of the marriage vow. <laughs> maybe that's why I never got married. Besides, who'd I ever meet worth marrying? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you, the answer is nobody. That girl you sent Mr. Favor for. Rose? She'd probably slap my face if I even suggested such a thing. Maybe you ain't so safe after all. Where's Miller and Sonny? They're in the smokehouse. You give them permission to keep the fire going. Smokehouse, fire out on the prairie, and fire in my blood. Crofts, take Walsh here on out to the smokehouse so he can make sure that he's hired hands taking good care of the meat. Don't worry about her. She'll be in good hands. <laughs> well, that's funny. That's a real joke. That's about the best one I ever heard, Wes. Uh, uh, uh. Buffalo's waiting. Barlow, well, you go on out and watch the road. Are you a good woman? I try to be. None for you. For that buffalo hunter? Suppose I said unless you was friendly with me, I'd kill him right now. Why do you have to kill somebody to prove you're not afraid? I ain't afraid. You're afraid. Alone, day and night, or with your girl, or with your men. Scared man don't live very long. No outlaw lives very long. I done fine. I'm gonna go right on living, high on a hog, down in Mexico with that army money. Until one of your friends or your girl kills you for it. What's made you so almighty smart? You have. Well, I'm glad to have contributed to your education. You see, I love my husband. I've been afraid to understand that. I've been afraid to tell him. Yeah, but he's out in the smokehouse under a gun. You've got a gun, and you're stronger than Jeremiah. But no woman would ever look at you twice with him in the room. Because he doesn't need a gun to make sure he's a man. There's a buckboard coming to the house. It can't be Rose. It's too quick. Get to the window. Don't open fire till I tell you. Hold it. I'm all right, Jeremiah. Listen, Mrs. Walsh, you maybe got company coming. You ask him in real nice if you want live company.
good afternoon, Mrs. Walsh. Good afternoon. Or, uh, perhaps I should say good evening. No, not quite, not quite. Oh, my goodness, I almost forgot. I'm supposed to be surprised. I think you'd better... Come in? Of course. Well, well, we've quite a little gathering here, haven't we? Um, uh, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. My last name, alas, is, uh, Smith. But it's redeemed somewhat by my first name, Julian. <laughs> uh, Julian Smith, you see. <laughs> what is he? Photographer. Well, what's he doing here? I asked him when I was over at the fort. We was married a year ago today. Well, at least it'll take up some of the time. Sonny, get his equipment. I will allow no one to touch my camera. Just exactly what's going on around here. You're noisy. I asked a question. And I said you're noisy. Get his camera, Sonny. Look, uh, please be very careful with that, will you? I'll be careful. I found out the kind of fella I am. I'm the careful type. From now on. Go with him, Miller. Look, Mr. Walsh, I... Look, I... I, I... Well, if nobody's gonna tell me what's going on around here... Nobody is. Well, I have a good mind to go right back to the fort without taking the picture. Oh, you'll take the picture. Nobody knows what's going to happen, do they? Everybody here does. Stop the wagon. Got no time to stop now. You'd better stop. Now! Wes isn't a killer. I said Wes isn't a killer. Paymaster, hey, guards at the fort might not agree with you, if they could still speak for themselves. They didn't just let him walk out with the money. They shot at him, didn't they? Matt Peeler shoot at him, too. Who's he? Little man, 60, 65, unarmed. He stood 10 feet away from him. Shot him down just to prove a point. What point? That he is a killer. Where is this smokehouse? About a mile ahead. Just why are you taking me to him? He's got a gun. It's not pointing at you. No, well, it's pointing at some other people, though. If I don't get back in time, they die. I think you're lying. Wes wouldn't do that. Supposing he did, you wouldn't be going back there. Nobody would. All you're saying is, you wouldn't. Yeah. Now, just a little bit together, please. Da, da, da. Fine, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good, good. Mm-hmm. That, my dear, is lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Now, hold it. Hold it. Now, uh, we want this to be a happy picture, don't we? So if you just smile. Jeremiah, I love you. Good, 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 good. There we are. Fine. 
Now, this is going to be a photograph you'll remember. And your children. If there are any children. Now, just hold it. Hold it. Just one. All right. Now, here we go. Bye. Where's Sonny? He's standing right here. Croft. Where's Barlow? I don't know. He's supposed to be watching the road. Well, go make sure. What kind of a man are you? Did you get your picture? Then stop asking questions and start hoping. What for? 20 minutes. Just hope you can hope after 20 minutes. I used to work in saloons. Dancing and singing. Wes took me out of that. He loves me. Well, that's why he's waiting for me now instead of making tracks for Mexico. He waiting for you or for that money you're gonna bring him? He trusted me with the money in the first place, didn't he? So it wouldn't be fun on him in case he was caught. Oh, I don't know why I waste time talking to you. Or why you bother listening. You're trying something. Trying to get back to the smokehouse in time. We got less than half hour. So oh, it was a trick. Shut up. <coughs> Stay shut. Howdy, soldier. What's wrong? Depends on who you are and where you're going. My name's Favor. The little lady, eh? She, uh, be my wife. You were going along like you in a hurry. Well, I am, kinda. What would you be wanting with us? Outlaws kill three men at the fort. Well, now, they take their wives along with them? You ain't mentioned why you were in a hurry. We, uh, going to the doctor. Well, there's one at the fort. I know, but uh, if you don't mind, I kind of like picking out my own doctor. Nothing wrong with that, except I... Please, the pains are pretty strong. I'm sorry, ma'am. But I got orders to hold everybody till the sergeant can question him. Well, when will he be back? He's riding patrol. He'll be along within the hour. I don't think I can wait that long. Listen, I, I'm a married man myself. If he was an outlaw, he wouldn't be carting his wife to a doctor. You know how rough that sergeant can be. You want to go up against him? You want to explain this to him? Herb, you can't keep her here. Lady in her condition? Yeah, I guess you're right. Just one thing, though. We don't tell the sergeant we let anyone through. Understand? Right. Go ahead, mister. Only one thing. Don't take it too fast. Lady in her condition. Oh, I won't. And thanks. Come along, Gordon. Stay and put, put that away. You never needed it. I wasn't sure. We worked that pretty good. You know, for a liar, you certainly make a good, honest man. There ain't nothing in sight. Miller and Croft's keeping a lookout. Well, we're pulling out. Well, let's get it over with so we can start moving. Yeah. Wait! I don't want anything to happen to it. It's a fine camera. Sure it is. to do something to these people. If the trail boss didn't get you back here in time, I made him a deal. 
Those bodies in the shed. So no problem, they're dead. Where's the money? In the buckboard. Barlow, get it and put it in my saddlebags. Tell Cross and Miller to get the horses. We'll need one for Rose. Use the trail bosses. Right. Wes, I'm not going with you. Why not? Shooting it out with men armed the way you are, that's one thing. But these people were standing here with empty hands. And one of them a woman, too. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? What's that mean? Oh, nothing. Nothing to you, I guess. You got your money. Why don't you get moving? Don't overplay your hand, trail boss. A man like you makes me feel bad. You know why? Why? Because even without a gun, you think you're someone. Without one, you know what I am. Yeah, I know. So you're gonna die, trail boss. Want me to turn my back? Make it easier for you. Make it easier for you. Wes, don't do it. No. No, I want to see your face. That's all I want. Just the memory of your face. Shoot him out of there. Got anything in mind? You keep him busy, Mr. Favor. All right. Oh, sir, those men were barbarians. Why, well, they wouldn't have minded riddling my camera with bullet holes. Sure right. Mr. Favor, if you ever find yourself this way again, we'd sure be pleased if you'd drop in for another cup of coffee. Wouldn't we, Jeremiah? We sure would. Thanks. Thanks to both of you. Mr. Favor, I wish you'd been a liar. but I found no place shallow enough to make a crossing. Crossing straight ahead, Pete. About a mile. Turn him. About time, too. Where you been, boss? What happened to your hand now? I'll tell you about it when we get more time. People. You know, there are times I do like cattle better. Let's get to him, Roddy. All right.
up there with you. Good to see you again. It's good to see you too. It's been a long time. Oh, yeah, about six weeks. You have a nice time at home? Oh, yeah, great, great. I I didn't do anything but eat Ma's cooking and sit around. Never looked at a steer except in the shop window. How about yourself? Oh, the same. When Mr. Favors letter comes saying to meet the Rio Salado, I almost write, this time, no Jesus. I don't leave home for anything. Oh, me too. <laughs> Person had to be soft in the head to go back on a drive after that last one. Eating dust on the chisholm. Did you really have a good time when you were home? Hey, yeah, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did it first, and then after a while, it was rowdy do this and rowdy do that. And ain't you ever going to get out of bed, rowdy? See, it was the same for me and all my little cousins and sisters. Uh, there was never a minute's peace. I'll be glad to get out on the trail. I'm glad I ain't the only one. <laughs> Another one of those posters. See, I, I've seen them everywhere. He doesn't look much like a bandito, do you think? No, not much. Kind of a handsome fellow. He must want pretty bad. Five thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Ah, oh, si, sí, it's mucho dinero. Mucho dinero is right. It's a lot of slugs. Couldn't do with money like that, huh, Jesus? It's a good it is a fortune. Well, maybe I'll just collect. Get myself a bandit. Drop the gun, senor! Well, isn't the handsome bandit himself? Gracias. Suppose you hand over the dinero, huh? Not you, the other. Look, you've got the wrong man, mister. I'm about as flat as a person can be. I spent all but my last two dollars back in Laredo, picking up grub. A sad story. Do you expect me to believe you're just wandering through the country penniless? Uh, no, we're on our way to Rio Salada to meet our crew. We're drovers. Both of you? Compadres? Si, sí, senor. That's right. Registremos. Sad story, it is true, senor. I don't care about the money, but uh, that watch don't mean nothing to you. And does it mean much to you? Well, my old man gave it to me. Daniel Yates, is that your name? It's my old man's name. My name's Rowdy. And you? Jesus Patines. De donde? Banderas. You should choose better compañeros. He is my friend. You believe that? Of course. He's proved it many times. You're a fool. You should pick better friends with more money. It is I who should donate to you. Here. Eat, drink, and be merry at the expense of Antonio Marcos. At least take the horses, Antonio. Andale. What a fella, isn't he? Very strange, Vandil. Well, I want to thank you, Jesus. Okay. Uh, he would have plugged me for sure if you hadn't said I was your friend. Well, that's true. Please. Si, senor Ali. Get down, senor. Hey, Mr. Favor. Uh, how are you doing? Good to see you. Si, 
boss, it is. Well, now, it hasn't been all that long, has it? You already forgot all the times you cussed me out? No, no, I'm better than ever. I've been practicing. <laughs> Not bad. Why don't you take your horses around back, go in and have a bath, anything you want. In here? Yeah, sure, it's all taken care of, all paid for. Okay. Well, how about that? You too, Jesus. Gracias, senor. Oh, I'll be over at the Monterey Saloon, seeing the fellow who's heard we're contracting. You two get cleaned up, you come on over. Right, we'll do that. And by the way, I'm glad you both decided to sign on. <laughs> you thought we wouldn't? Well, it's time is different. You never know who in this outfit's going to come back or not. Well, who showed so far? Uh, Collins, but he's still drunk from Sedalia. Daddy, a couple others. What about Pete and Mushy and Wishbone? Jim Clinch, Joe Scarlett? Have to wait and see. It's more your Yeah, a little pig-headed at times. Well, who can't be? Mr. Favor? Oh, Collins. I want you to meet a friend of mine, Dan. Dan, this is the boss. I'm the best boss a man I ever had. All right, Dan. If I was a drover, I might take out a recommendation and sign on with you. Only I ain't a drover. Just what line of work are you in, Dan? Well, I guess you might say right now it's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> that does explain why you and Collins are such good friends. Pal, that's what we are, ain't we, Dan? Pal. Sure enough! <laughs> Mr. Andrews. Oh, Mr. Favor, good to see you, good to see you. Sit down, sit down. Thank you. Don Andres Marcos, Mr. Gail Favor. Glad to know you, sir. I'm honored to meet you, senor. And welcome to our town of Rio Salado. If I can be of service. Oh, thank you, but I doubt if we'll be here that long. I hope our troubles will not inconvenience you. Troubles? Don Andres means this business about the bandits. Oh, yes. Well, I don't think that has anything to do with our business. Which is why you are here. So I will excuse myself and leave you to it. Don Benito, gracias for the drink. My pleasure, Don Andres. Adios. Senor. Sir. I didn't know there were any like him left around. There aren't many. He's one of the last of the old Dons. Hey, doesn't, doesn't the name Marcos mean anything to you? Marcos? Oh, the poster is uh, the bandido? Yes, Don Andre's oldest son, sign of the family. It's a tragedy, Mr. Favor. Yes, it's a small tragedy, but large enough in a little place like this. It's an old story, bad boy from a good family. Not for the same reasons, and not quite in the same way. Uh -huh. Antonio Marcos doesn't call himself a bandito. He calls himself a revolutionary. He's leading a revolt against the Texas land grant. Oh, isn't it a little bit late for that? It's a lost cause. But he can do a lot of damage. Matter of fact, already has. Robbery, even murder. Three men have been killed already. You said he had reasons. He does. Certain unscrupulous ranchers, outsiders, all of them, took advantage of the law and legally stole his father's lands. Left the family almost penniless. Killed Antonio's mother. You know, boy, sure didn't seem penniless. No, they're proud people, Mr. Favor. Fine people. Some of the finest I've ever known. They're right around here. Hmm. Well, about the herd. Yes, I was coming to that. Mr. Favor, there's been a delay in getting the cattle together because of this trouble. My vaqueros spend most of their time right here in town, getting ready to fight if they have to. Is that bad? Ugly situation. Tiniest thing could set off a little civil war. There's suspicion everywhere in this talk. Well, when my men get here, we'll gather up the herd ourselves, then. Good, good. When'll that be? Well, I told them today, but they're coming in from all over. You never can tell who will show up or when. Well, we might as well start tomorrow morning with what we have. All right, anything you say. I must warn you, you be very careful, Mr. Favor. Outsiders are not trusted in Rio Salado, so keep your men well in hand. Don't let them get mixed up in this. Oh, because of this one fellow? Yes, he's become a sort of a symbol. To both sides. I don't know what's going to happen when they finally get him. You heard me. Wait a minute. I know these men. Howdy, Mr. Favor. 
What in blazes are you doing with those masks on your face? I'm trying to keep from breathing all the alkali dust you got around here. What do you think? Do well, you have to get in trouble before we even get started? How'd I know he was going to be so touchy? Uh -huh. I'm glad to see you anyway. Both of you. Good to see you too, Mr. Favor. Yeah, well, I had a better job all lined up, but I figured you'd have a hard time getting any other sane man to cook for you, so... Well, for the good of the men, I decided to come along. You're hired. Getty will show you the hotel and where the stable is. And then, where the saloon is. Yippee! Let's go, Mr. Let's go, Boone! <laughs> <laughs> not for you. Now, just a minute, old pal. This is my friend, Jesus. How do you know he ain't one of Marco's men? I don't drink with banditos. And maybe you're the one who won't be drinking, mister. You hear me? Oh, get just out. A just a minute. You here. take his part, you'll get the same as him. Why, you bearded old goat, I'll tear you apart. You think of someone else. Rowdy. Boy. This is kind of a surprise, ain't it? Now, wait a minute, Yates. His name is Yates, too. Yeah, he's my pa. Rowdy, you told us your pa was dead. He still is. to say to you. Well, look, let's, let's go to that blacksmith shop across the street. There are things to be said after all those years. Why the blacksmith shop? Well, I, I bunked there. Once I ran it. Look, boy, the same blood flows in both our veins no matter what I've done. Come on. Rowdy, boy, is there anything to say about your pa? You wished I was dead? Why not? It's true. What'd you expect me to say? Well, I know I ran out on you and your ma, I admit it. It's been a long time, Dan. I'm surprised you recognize me. Or me, you, for that matter. Oh, you've grown some, but I'd know you anyway. You're my boy. You really care about that, don't you? Maybe more than it seems. Why'd you run out on ma? Well, that ain't an easy thing to explain, boy, but ever since them early days, even before, I never could set long at a spell just the way I'm built. As yeah. long as she'd go along with me, everything was fine, but then they was you and school. Oh, it was my fault, huh? Wasn't nobody's fault. She just had to stay and I just had to go. Don't you ever get that itch in you to get out and see something new, do something new, even if it's only to... Ride out over that far hill just to see what's beyond. Hear the wind in different trees to sit by a lonely campfire and listen to the wolves about and know you're your own man. Ain't you never had that? Yeah, I guess maybe I have. I'm glad to hear you say that, boy. Not for me, for you. It means you're a man, you got the stuff. That's no excuse for not ever coming back. Well, I was going, I meant to all along, but how could I come back empty-handed? I was always looking for that steak to set us up real good. We never wanted anything. Just you. But it was for you I'd done it. A ranch. Like we always used to talk about. You remember? Yeah, I remember. Ma, you and me on a place of our own. Well, a man could be himself and not beholden anyone or have to work for hire. That's what I wanted. I never got that steak. I never had a real chance till now. You think 
think you could go back now, Dan? Why not? You and me could run that ranch now. You're a man now. All we need is a little steak. Say, 5,000. Oh, come on, quit dreaming, will you? There's no 5,000 and there's not likely to be. Now, Dan, you're gonna go on drifting and catching drinks off drovers like me and getting in brawls and scrapes and working as little as you absolutely have to for the rest of your life. And I hope nothing more. Okay. And then what? Someday somebody plugs me or a horse kicks me or the old ticker just stops and that's the end of me. I may not have much time left, boy. I'd like to spend it with loved ones. And you ain't got any loved ones. You mean she don't? You don't feel nothing for me? Yeah, I guess we do in spite of everything. Well, it's the same with me. Maybe I could make it up to you. Wouldn't it make it up to you if I was to get you that little ranch? Quit dreaming. You can't go back now. It's too late for that. Oh, wait. You saw her on account of that friend of yours? That's right, I am. Well, you can't hold that against me, boy. I fought in the War of 46, remember? You used to play with the buttons off my uniform. I fought with old Sam Houston and San Jacinto. I had a brother died at Meyer. Died when they shot every tenth man just to show they could. Look, that war's been over a long time. That's no excuse to start another one here. All right, boy, anything you say, just don't get sore at me. Maybe, maybe we could team up, do things together, us two, huh? I'm, I'm moving north with a herd. I won't be back here till fall. I see. Well, maybe I'll move you up to see your mother. I might be able to help a little around the place. Yeah, she'll probably just take you back, too, in spite of her tears and vows. But you'd only disappoint her again. Now you better stay away from her. Oh, now, boy! can't do it now. So forget it. Look, you've paid him back in full. You don't owe him a thing. It's the other way around.
Just come on over and join the party. No, I don't much feel like it, Wish. Oh, come on, there's no reason for you to be down in the dumps. Don't anybody think anything about that. Thanks. Senor Geraldi, why don't you ask your father to come and have a drink with us? You mean after the way he talked to you? Oh, I don't mind. It was all a kind of mix-up. He's probably a fine fellow, and we would all have fun together, no? Well, thanks, Jesus. I don't even know where he is. Wonder where a man will find the sheriff in this dried up town. Don't know. Hey. Huh? Is that the home that robbed us? Well, that's him, all right. Antonio Marcus. Reward. Five thousand dollars. Just think. We was only about that far from all that money. We was never any farther away from it. We was on the wrong end of them guns. Wait! God! Hey! Well, we just met up with these nims here on the poster. You take your horses? Yeah, and everything else, too. We got our saddles, though. Told him we as drovers might lose their jobs without them. Hey, it's a funny thing. He asked about Rowdy and Jesus here. Wanted to know if we knew him. We told him, sure, we was with the same outfit. Then he let us go and gave us our saddles. You a friend of yours? Well, you could say something like that. Well, he appeared like a pretty good old boy, but we better find the sheriff and get our horses back. Afraid it won't do much good. Yeah, we got time for that later. Yeah, I'm hungry enough to eat a dead blasted haunted toad. We got plenty of food and drink. Just remember, you've got to get up early and start rounding up. Come on, let's go. Come on, it ain't like my cooking, but you're about it. Yes, sir. Howdy. I got to talk to you. What do you want, Dan? Can we go somewhere, just for a little, to talk? Rowdy, I know how you feel. I meant it when I said I wanted to make it up to you. Listen, I've been doing a lot of thinking about it. I ain't as young as I was. I don't sit easy by the campfire no more. There's aches in my bones I never had before. Look. Oh, listen, boy, let me say it. I want to come back, Rowdy. You and me running our own place with your mother mind us. That's what I want. I'm sorry, but like I said, it's a little late for that now, Dan. Oh, no, it ain't, boy, because I got something cooking. how to collect that $5,000 we need. Oh. I think I know how we can collect that reward money for the bandito. You mean Antonio Marcus? How? Now, Mon, how I'll take care of how. You say you'll come in with me, all right? If I get the information we need, you'll just come along and help out. It won't take long the way I got it figured, and he won't even know what hit him. You mean you plan on killing him? Well, if Pusha says dead or alive, he's a bandito. Look, I ain't no bounty hunter. Oh, now look, boy. This fellow needs taken. Somebody will do it. Not me. You realize how much money that is more than either one of us have ever seen? You realize what it could do for us? Give us both what we've always wanted. Look, i never done anything like that, and I ain't about to start now. Not with Antonio and Marcus, why, well, he's no different than I am. You know him. That's right, I know him. He held us up today, me and Jesus. Could have robbed us or killed us, but he didn't. He gave us back everything, even that old watch you gave me. He knows you, knows your name? Yeah, he knows my name. And he saw your name in the watch. You still carry that old watch I gave you? Yeah. Well, now, boy, that's right thoughtful of you. I don't think I'll carry it anymore. I don't much want anything that belongs to you. You can have it back if you want. I'm sorry to hear you say that, boy. Maybe you'd change your mind once you got that money in your hands. I doubt that. Rowdy, give me back that watch I gave you. Good 
Goodbye. Kiss for real, little son. It's a Marcos place, ain't it? See, si, the Marcos, he lives here. Yeah, I want to talk to the old man. It's impossible, he's retiring. I said I want to talk to him. Oh, hey, you shut up, you hear me? Hey, no. Hey, Marcos, you better go home. Yeah, I'll see you later. Hey, Marcos, you better go home. Senor, what is it you want? I don't suppose you'd tell me where your son Antonio is, would you? No, senor. Even if I knew, I would not tell you. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. So I guess I'll have to manage it another way. No! Please, stop! No! Ah! Please, me... Yeah, well, now, why don't you tell that bandito you? We're going to be working. Oh, about three miles west of town. Sort of worried about Pete. Where do you suppose he'd be? I sure don't know. Maybe he ain't coming. Oh, you'd think he'd write or something. Still time for him to show up. Probably palpitating over some female somewhere. <laughs> I should have thought of that. Maybe that's where Murdoch is and some of the others, too. I've left word where to find us. He'll probably be draggling in for three days yet. Well, everybody ready to ride? Yeah, yeah. Senor? Huh? There was a Senor Yates here, no? Yeah, right over there. Senor Yates? Yeah, how are you? I have a message for you from Antonio Marcos. Marcos? He says he will do something about it. He is coming here to kill you, and there is no use trying to escape. Every road is blocked. Hey, whoa, whoa, wait up. What did he say? Antonio Marcos is coming here to kill me. We'd like to know what's going on. Mexican boy just came in with a message for Yates here from Antonio Marcos. Said he was coming in to kill him. Oh, so he knows. Knows what? What happened last night. Your name is Yates? Yeah, that's right, Roddy Yates. That's a surprise. I thought Look, that... what's this all about? Maybe you better ask him. Well, ask me what? What happened to Don Andres Marcus's house last night? You mean to tell me you don't know? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean to tell you. And we can vouch for it. He was with us all last night. Come on. Let's find out about this. No, no, he was an old one, you know? Yeah, just the one I thought. Looked like a mountain man, beard on his face. The one who started that trouble yesterday. Why did he have a watch with your name in it? This is the same name as his. He's my father. Where is he? I don't know. And you had nothing to do with this? Nothing. It seems Antonio Marcus doesn't know that. Maybe too late to stop him. It's up to you to protect him. In this town, with a friend of Antonio's on every corner. All right, then get him out of town. With Antonio's men on every road waiting to shoot on sight. And it's going to be up to you to tell Antonio about it. He may not wait to listen. His father in the unconscious may be dying. This whole thing could explode into bloodshed before we have a chance to stop it. Look, I'm partly guilty, too. It's my responsibility. I'll face up to him. What are you talking about? You got nothing to do with his guilt. I might have known Dan was planning something like this. Gotta do it.
reception is this? We're just one day late. Yeah, well, maybe you should have waited another day, Pete. Just in time for some lead throwing. Well, what's going on here? Come on inside, Pete, I'll tell you. swearing in some deputies. I tried that. Everybody's sick or awful busy or something. You can't blame them the way this thing started. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're your deputies now. You don't have to do that. It's none of your affair. You don't owe him nothing. Neither do you. We ain't doing this for him, Roddy. Yes, Ben. I guess you realize how dangerous this situation is. Well, yes, I think I do. If it happened some other way, things might be different. But this cowardly attack on a defenseless old man, a man everybody respected and loved. I know that. Then you must know that if you try to take him, arrest him, or worse, I won't answer for the consequences. What do you expect me to do? Let him ride into town and gun this boy down? If this boy was behind bars where he belonged, there'd be no danger of that. Is that so? Ben, do you expect me to let Antonio ride into town and out again unmolested? It is suicide, John. Worse. Think what it means to the town. With these men behind you, there'll be a war. You owe it to the town, John. I owe it to the town to do the duty I swore I would. That's what I'm going to do. If these are the only men that'll help me, well, that's the way it is. Besides, our man had nothing to do with this thing. What do you mean? This is what I said. He's innocent. Who did it, then? There's another man. It doesn't matter. It matters a lot. It doesn't matter. I'm going to answer for him. It was a boy's father, Ben. Where is he? Gone? We've got to stop Antonio. How? I don't know how, but we've got to stop him. We've got to speak to him first. I'm going to do that. I'll face up to him. Ready? you're under arrest. Look around you, Sheriff. You're not going to intimidate me, Antonio. It is not to intimidate you. It is to ensure that this business, which is personal between this man and me, stays that way. Personal. You can't get away with this. A lot of innocent people will suffer. You talk to me of innocent people. My father was innocent. And so is this man. He didn't touch your father. No. What about this? Somebody else took it. Who? This man had it only yesterday. I saw it. This man did not beat your father. Perhaps you can tell me then who it was. There's no way of proving who it was. Then I have only you. You will have to answer. I'll answer. Only let's have this just between you and me, not uh, any of the rest of these men, all right? No se meten, segundo. Muy bien, jefe. All right. That is the way it would be. You and me. Sheriff, give me a word. This is going to be a fair fight. You won't hold anybody here for what happens. All right. Anytime you're ready, senor.
that fella, my boy? Some boy, huh? You tell everybody. Under the circumstances. You're trying to tell me we, we don't get the hurt? How can I let you take it now? The way these people feel. Now, after what you've done. What we've them. done? We didn't have anything to do with it. Look, you mean to tell me just because we were here? Yeah. Just because you were here. These people are always going to feel that you being here brought this whole thing to a head. And we lose our jobs just like that? Sorry, I can't afford to take the chance. A hundred miles from nowhere. These men are out of work. Most of them are out of money. And you're sorry. That's all I can say. I'm sorry, boss. Don't ever say that again. Hey. Hey, you know? It just might be that none of us has to be sorry at all. It could very well work out that it somehow works out for the best. You mean losing the herd? Yeah. I've been thinking that. There's a little Mexican herd I heard about down the river. Only about 800 dead, but it's for sale. Now, the brush between here and there is just thick with wild critters, free for the taking. Now, we beat the brush growing down. We pick some up, and with the 800 we bought, we just might end up in a herd. Where are you going? I'm going to get us some cash. My half of that reward money. Uh, this will make up for the money you're losing. Don't you never listen to me? Didn't you hear what I just said? Yeah, I heard you. Think I'd take a cent of that money even if I needed it, which I don't? You hear me? Which I don't. I can get my own herd. You're not just saying that. Listen, this isn't something I just dreamt up. I've been thinking about this for a long time. It's been tried before and it's worked fine. Just never had any reason to try it before. Now I've got a reason. Are you just going to pick up a herd of lousy scrub cattle? Well, there's nothing wrong with them. They just need gentlemen a little. Besides, up north they'll get just as good a price. And we won't have to split the profits with nobody neither. It'll work, Roddy. All right. All right, then it's settled. We'll start beating them south in the morning. Let's get our gear ready, man. Hey, Rod. Thanks. Thanks for trying to help me. You shouldn't be worrying about that now. Well, what should I be worrying about? I can't say. But... Well, there is something your old man's been spreading around that uh, you were in on it with him. He is your pa. Yeah, I know. this game, mister? You take that money, I'm a... Come on, cash in. Well, it's about time. <laughs> All righty, I knew you'd come around. Dan, I bought you a horse. Get out of town fast, are we, before somebody takes a pot shot at us, huh? Oh, rowdy boy. I'm sorry you was mad at me, but if you only knew how this makes me feel. 
Listen, boy. I never could tell you before, but I can now. I've been lonely. Awful lonely. I need you and your ma. Maybe it was just pride made me stay away, but now I'm glad. Awful glad. It's gonna be me. And you and, and that little ranch. Shut up, Dan. It ain't gonna be nothing. You're gonna take that horse and that money and get out of here. You think this money's tainted too, huh? Isn't it? Look, I told you I didn't want any part of that money. Now you get on that horse and get out of here and don't ever come around me again. But you're more. She feel the same way I do. She wouldn't want a penny of it. Roddy boy, you can't send me away alone. I'm a poor old man. I'm your father. My father's been dead a long time. Man, huh? We were Marcos's men, senor. It was Marcos's men, all right. And they got their money. They're just playing bandits now. Poor pa. All his life he wanted that money. Look, you're going ahead. We'll bury him. It wasn't as bad as you'd think. You'd known him like he was when I was little. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like you said, he, he died a long time ago. He stopped caring for those who loved him. I sent him out here. No, you, you didn't. He put himself on that road a long time ago. You gotta stop blaming yourself. You had nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. Try and forget it, huh? Those brush critters are thickest just northeast of Laredo. About three days' ride from here. Your pay will start from the day you reach Rio Salado. Yeah, but there won't be any owners this time. And no small ranchers to give you an advance. How are we going to get the money? Out of my own pocket. You'll be working for me in more senses than one. You really meant what you said about owning your own herd. I meant it. I mean to own my own herd. Most of it anyway. I'm going to use all the money I got. Some to buy beef. Some to pay your wages while you're beating them out of the brushes. It's going to be a hard job, but you'll get paid. And I'll share a quarter of the profits with you. Well, what do you say? Here we go. I was hoping you'd take it like that. Well, what are you all standing around for? Come on, let's hit leather. <laughs> Round them up. Critters in the last half hour, all dead and not a mark on them. I never seen the like of it, Roddy. I knew they're jacks and pack rats and gophers, and just like they died in their tracks. 
And then Buzzard's going to be too fat to fly in another week. Get yourself something to eat, Jim. Yeah. I saw this up in the nations a couple of years ago, Rowdy. Well, you could ride a week in any direction. Never see any small game. You know, what I'm worried about is uh, if this plague will get into the herd or not. Yeah, well, small game doesn't eat grass, and neither does lobos. You know, if they get hungry enough... I know. If they run out of small game to feed on, they'll come at this herd like a walking Sunday social. When's Mr. Favor gonna get back? <laughs> Not for 10, 12 days. Now, you know the Army isn't exactly swift when it's dealing for beef. find the man running this outfit. Sitting down over there. Me and my crew are camped down Wendy, I heard. Name's Yates. This here's Forrester. Figure you and me ought to dicker a deal. Oh, what kind of deal? You're just about here right now. The sawtooth's over here. And another mountain range all along here. And up north is Land's End. It took me and my crew five days to get down here from Land's End. And that reckons out about a 10-day push for you. Maybe, maybe less. So what about it? You cut me out 50 head of beef when you reach Land's End, and me and my crew will ride along with you. 50? Why? Because you've got 10 days of pushing through more wolves than you can count. And the plague stretches through this whole valley from Land's End down to here, and it's moving along like grass fire. That herd of yours is going to look real tasty to them Lobos trail boss. Ramrod, trail boss is up at Fort Concha. Look, you want 50 head of my cattle for a pig and a poke, and I ain't even heard them squeal yet. I'm under contract to the army to kill wolves. Our dicker makes it so I kill them where you are. Army paying you for this? 12 cents for every set of years I turn over. Well, then kill them then. No hurry about it. They'll still be around after what's left of your herd is long gone. Yeah, well, we'll get along, mister. I made you an offer. You'd be smart to take it. Look, I never saw the man in my life who was worth paying twice for the same job. was a man who would be easy to dislike permanently. Herd's a little spooky, Rowdy. Them wolves got them talking to themselves. Any sign of stock sickness? Nope. Well, that settles it. No reason to believe if we doubled back, they wouldn't be plagued on the other side of those sawtooths. Clay, I'm going to move on to Land's End. I want every man packing a rifle. Yeah. Okay, boys, you heard the man. What's that? 
Man stopped by to offer me a deal. Now he's covering his hand with a few dead wolves. Huh? Not because they're curious, either. Yeah. Why don't you ride out and see if you can get one of the big ones, Jim? Maybe that'll scare the rest of them off. If they don't, I will. Mr. Wishbone? I don't know. I'm sure not about to count them. Give me one of those sticks of wood. Come on, we got a lot more fires to light. Left wood. Getting a little short. Yeah, I only got a few hours to light. Yeah, just uh, how long do you figure these fires are going to keep them wolves back anyway? I don't know, Jim. Well, I ain't worried particularly. I'm just wondering. Yeah, so am I. as they look. And just about a couple more nights of this and they'll be ready for pine box fittings. I sure wish I knew what Mr. Favor would do in a case like this. Well, your guess is as good as mine, Rowdy. I don't think that matters right now. I mean, what is important is, what are you going to do? Yeah. The fresh horse you got? As fresh as we got, yeah. Well, come son of you right back and tell that Wolver he's got a deal. Tell him I want him here by bedding time. Well, I think I can get him here by noon if I leave now. Well, I mean, after all, uh, he and his crew can't be far behind and they're paid for killing wolves. All right, get him here by noon then. I'll do it. Camp here. Tell Wishbone, will you? We ain't went hardly more than a mile. I told you we'll make it right here. Now tell him. Come on.
the world, my senor. Yeah, I'll help you along. How far back was he? About three miles, just tagging along. You know that he's got a total of a crew of three, including him? He men gonna handle all those wolves? Uh, I mentioned the matter, and he told me that uh, he could get the job done. Well, where is he now? He told me he'd be here when he got here. All right. Go get yourself something to eat. I'll be hanging around a while. working for me. It's Cannon. And him? Cannon, too. They're my sons. All right, Cannon, you got your deal. I'll cut out 50 head when we get to Land's End. Only that ain't the deal no more, Ramrod. What are you talking about? That's the deal you offered. Wrong. Oh, that's the deal you turned down. I was going to use 20 on my head for bait, two each night. Now, the new deal I'm figuring is you provide the bait. All right, someone cut two steers out for this man. Luther? Yeah, Pa. You and Matt go with those men and bring back them cattle. Right away, Pa. Julie! Yes, Pa? I'm gonna need a big enough batch of that mix for two steer. Yes, Pa. Some grub. Fill plates for the others when they get back. We feed ourselves. Word of your cooking's gotten around, Wishbone. Hey, Kenan. Just what do you do with that outfit? Kill the wolves? Well, not sitting there, you don't. Man don't beat nature with muscles, mister. He does it with this. Oh? How? It ain't pretty, but nothing Strict Nine does is pretty. jump out of my skin. Yeah, well, they got everybody that way, Jim. When's this wolf going to get to wolfing anyway? Uh, he rode out of here a half hour ago with his two boys. You mean out there with them? Yeah, all he had was two torches on his cart. Well, I don't know which is spookier, having them out there or him. Yeah. You know, that sound like a mule there Jack being killed. You know, mule there Jack's to be killed around here. Rowdy, look. Send us right back with them critters, Mr. Yates. How come? A pause says the more bait you use, the more fish you catch. 
Pa is always right. Don't seem human for a man to always be right, boy. Pa is. Pa says we're not to take no animal under 1,200 pounds. All right, Joe. You heard what Pa said. Why, Pa just doesn't order them wolves to drop dead. That would save us an awful lot of bother. That don't make good sense, does it, Mr. Yates? need to. Julie, you tend to the water. Mm. Like you got in some pretty good licks last night, huh? Oh, about a hundred pair a year. That mean I can cut out the guard fires pretty quick? It takes a lot of dipping to empty the pot, Yates. That don't answer my question. I'll be able to answer better after this night's work. That dipper full last night didn't seem to do much. Now you just mind that 50 head of mine, Ramron. I mean to market them good and fat. Yeah, well, the market's in Denver, Kenan, not Land's Inn. You're gonna have to drive them the rest away yourself. Won't have to. You see, just beyond Land's End, there's some Cheyenne does a lot of trapping. And I'm going to dicker off them cattle to them. And you know, Ramrod, I don't think me and my boys will have a bit of trouble driving a load of prime beaver pelts into Denver. It's fine. Oh, a little girl like you shouldn't be toting a big bucket like this. Thank you. Julie, do your own toting. Please. You hear me, girl? Please. <laughs> girl, you come here. What's he so idle about? Can't a girl even talk to anybody? Oh, I've seen that kind before. Always have to have somebody kowtow to him. Makes him feel important. You know, he ought to try some of that wolf poison on himself. It's his family. Stay away from him. Let's get this herd moving. Making a laughing stock out of yourself. Well, ain't you got nothing to say for yourself, girl? Sorry, Pa. Sorry? You ought to be ashamed, making eyes at a common trail hand. Pa, I didn't even look at him. He just come and offered to tote the bucket. You're Abner Cannon's daughter, girl. We ain't to be beholden to nobody. I know, Pa. I see that you remember it. I get that dress washed up before I take a strap to you. Beholden to anybody, is it? Well, I don't see why it should. 
Well, I'd like to dick her off some cornmeal for some salt pork. Well, now, uh, how big a piece of salt pork? Enough for a mess of beans for morning. Oh, well, that seems fair enough. Come right along over here. You're going to have to parboil it pretty good. It's, it's real salty. Yes, sir. That's going to be enough. There you are. Oh, no, honey, you keep it. We're up to our ears in cornmeal. Oh, no, that's part of the dicker. Well, you're right at that. My, this is fine cornmeal. I pounded her up myself, Mr. Wishbone. You don't say. Well, now. Uh, this isn't going to be a fair dicker unless you get a little something to boot. Let's see what I've got here. There we are. What's it for? Well, that's for making dreams come true, honey. Let me show you. doing packing that ribbon around. Looks very pretty on you. My ma could read and write, Mr. Yates. Well, that don't take too much to it. Uh, I can't hardly do nothing. Except cook and tote water and mend a little. It's more than I can do. Except maybe tote water. I'm pretty handy at that. M ma said that I grew up to read and write, too. The Lord would see to it. It hasn't happened yet, though. How old are you, Julie? I reckon about 18. Yeah, well, I think your mom was right. But, uh, it's about time you start giving the Lord a little helping hand. Ain't it awfully hard? Well, no harder than hauling water. Here, I'll show you. See, these, uh, these here letters are the letters of the alphabet, the ABCs, and each one of them has a a different sound uh, of its own in, in the words, see? You mean each of them little marks makes a noise? Well, uh, no, well, the marks don't, but you make a noise with the marks. Want to try it? Well, Pa always did say I was part mule. Try anything once. <laughs> How do I start? You start with this one. This is A. As the ah sound. Ah? A, ah. Ah? Right. Ah. Okay. G. 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 Yeah. G. Right. G. H. F H. H is... Ah, uh, ah, what's that one in front? Oh, that's an M. That's the M sound. Ma, ma. Ma, ma, t, ma, ma. Why? Ma? Yeah. I can read my brother's name. Sure. What are the other sounds, Mr. Yates? Oh, please, I gotta know. It'd be so much easier if we had some pictures, like you'd have some pictures to go along with the words, you know? I've been forgetting my chores. Julie, don't forget your first lesson. I'm afraid it's gonna have to be the last lesson, Mr. Yates. Oh? 
Well, it ain't you. It's Pa. Myself, I don't mind a licking. Not if it's over something really important. But it's what he might do to you. To me? Once he took a bullwhip to a traveling man. Would like to have killed him before Luther and Matt could have pulled him off. All that man did was look at me. That's all he did, Mr. Yates. Look at me. Sir, it isn't moving out? Not at all. The cannon boys haven't come down for their two head yet. Well, then cut them out and tie them down. I want this herd moving. down at the creek washing up. Oh. By the way, how's the, how's the reading coming along? It ain't hardly easy, Mr. Yates. Yeah, well, nothing is. You'll catch on, though. But the big letters don't all look like they're little letters. Oh, well, those are... Well, them are the boss letters, you know. Then I better learn them first. Yeah. Take down up at the bedground. Pa? Pa? We ain't gonna be baiting no more, Ramrod. We can clear up what few are left with the traps. But you decide this. Last night. Saving you six head of beef. Thought you'd be appreciating that. Yeah, well, I'd sure appreciate someone telling me about it. I've been holding up the herd for an hour waiting on your boys. That's a real shame. Hey, Pa. Why are you so set on prodding Mr. Yates? He ain't a Mr. Nothing, boy. He's just a cow pusher. Luther, you boys have rid with your Pa ever since you was born. First after buffalo, elk, mule deer, and then contract hunting. No man has ever told us when to go or when to stay. Now, Yates is ramrod of that drive, but he ain't bossing Abner Cannon. I'm just making sure he knows that. <clears throat>
I'm looking for Mr. Yates. You know where he is? Well, Jesus has got a couple sick horses, ma'am. He's over to Remuda. Help doctor him. Thank you, Mr. Musgrove. Mm. Well, anytime, ma'am. Better keep these horses off the line for a few days, huh? It will take at least that long for the south to take effect. Mr. Yates, could I talk to you a spell? Oh, it's good. important. Yeah, go ahead. Pa said when we reach Land's End, we'll be leaving the herd. I'm afraid so. Well, I'm getting so I can make out some words, but on others, sounds come out I never heard before. What, what happened to the ribbon that Wishbone gave you? Well, I guess I forgot it. Like, when you string these three letters together. G-H-T? They don't sound like nothing I ever heard before. And T and H together? And O and U together? Oh, yeah, well, uh, when those four letters are together in a word, they have different sounds. Wait a minute, I, I didn't give you any words with those letters in it anyway. Oh, well, I got them in a letter. Would you read it to me, Mr. Yates? It ain't long. Abner, you won't listen, so there is no other way. I'm going... Uh... Abner, your pa? And who wrote this to him? My ma wrote it. Just before she... Before she ran off. Pa said she went back east to her sister. I can't read a letter that's to your pa. Does he know you have this? He'd skim me if he ever knew I went into the trunk where she keeps her things. Yeah, well, I think you better put this back in that trunk and leave it there. Then I'll never know what my ma said. No, not unless your pa reads it to you. I'm sorry, Julie. Trouble, Senor Roddy? Come on, let's move out. Sloan, I'm going to be in a noon camp. I want this herd to the top of Land's End by nightfall. All right, but there's fresh spring water down at the bottom of those cliffs, and I need some. So you and Mushy don't go drag tailing about it. You got Mr. Roddy under pride. The day you can figure out what makes a ramrod take is the day you'll be one. Come on, get up. <laughs> Thunder's got into that girl. Been a caution lately, Pa. All the time, wool gathering. Now, you mark my word, boy. It's wool gathering that's gonna stop. Julie! You get out of there and you get food for your brothers and your Pa. Julie, I've never had to lie up you. You've always been a mindful girl, the way your Ma wanted. The way Ma wanted, Pa. You ain't feeling good, girl? I feel sick. Sick deep inside. Sick to die. Your sister's feeling poorly, boys. We'll rustle up some grub ourselves. Matt, fetch some firewood. Luther, break out some stores. Girl, if you're... Like Ma wanted. Girl. What did Ma want? What really happened to her?
Your ma didn't want us anymore. She just run off, like I told you. Went back to her sister. That's a lie. Girl! It's right here, Pa. Here in this letter. Mind your tongue. It ain't true. It ain't true? What Ma wrote in her own writing ain't true? And if it weren't her writing, you wouldn't have kept it with her things. Pa, shut up, boy. Who read that letter to you, girl? Who read it to you? You couldn't read it yourself. You'll tell me, girl. Pa, you ain't gonna touch Julie again. That writing, what's it say? What happened to Ma? Now you're arguing? Why you wanna do a thing like that? As I reckon it's about time, Pa. About Ma, we got a right to know. All right. All right. Your ma ain't back east. She's dead. Always talking about some fool notion like schooling. Or a house that ain't got any wheels under it. I told her. I kept telling her. That wasn't my way. But she wouldn't give in. She wouldn't stop arguing. Finally, she wrote this. And she started out after a lawman. To make me raise you young'uns her way. I went after her, tried to bring her back, but the wagon, it was an accident. I didn't mean her no harm, never did. But it's the best thing that could have happened, you hear? Pa, why didn't you tell us? Because you didn't need to know. I judged it done over with. That's the way I left it. I figure it's about time for us to get loose of you, Pa. Lucy, your pa. What are you gonna do, boy? How are you gonna live? We got a right to one of the wagons, and half of the wolf ears, and, and there's half of the cattle. You ever like mine, Matt? Pick up your brush. How could you know what your ma wrote? Mr. Yates learned me the alphabet. I sounded out Ma's words. Then it's just like he read it to you. Just like it. screaming mad, and then he ran off. Luther and Matt, he hurt him awful bad, Mr. Yates. I don't know what to do for him. Let's go. Take his gun. He was going to kill Luther and Matt if I didn't fetch him, Mr. Yates. Couldn't let him kill my own brothers. Mind, you hear? Throw it away. Inside, girl.
Get away from the wagon. That's far enough. Say what you gotta say, Kenan. Don't need words. I'm just studying a man that's got nothing better to do than to tend another man's business. Well, that's just one side of it. Your wife had a side too, you know. You did read that letter to Julie. No, I didn't. I told her not to read it. You're a liar, Ramrod. That's just your judgment. You better make sure it's right, because uh, to back it up, you're going to have to shoot me in the back. Back or front, it don't matter. No man can turn my kin against me. No man. Even you, Ken? He's right, Pa. Don't make it any worse. I'm going to get on that horse and... Right out and find the nearest law. We'll let the law decide who's right and who's wrong. Pa, huh? well, don't do it. So, Julie, no need for me now. We'll be heading east come sun up, Mr. Yates. What about your cattle? Uh, it was Pa's dicker, not ours. Matt and me, we figure we're not entitled. Thanks anyway. We're obliged, Mr. Yates. Yeah. It's all done with, Julie. Try to put that out of your mind. It ain't easy, Mr. Yates. Not after... Maybe it was the reading that done it. Well, the letter had to come out in the open sooner or later. Couldn't stay buried forever. Gotta believe that. Maybe I do. Leastways about Pa. What about Luther and Matt and me? We're wolves, Mr. Yates. We don't belong in a town. Well, that's because you never, you never lived in one. I think you owe it to your ma to try one out. Yeah. 